Hey, it's October 16th here at the farm. I'm gonna do a couple of things today. It's gonna to be kind of a special treat today. I've got a friend who used to buy honey from me. Her name is uh, Miss Hammerbacker, and she now lives in Maryland. She's a teacher up there, and they're uh, teaching the kids about bees and, and things. And so she asked me if I'd be able to willing to answer some questions for her class. And so that's what we're gonna to do today. Uh, I got a friend here with me. It's been a good day for this, because this is Joe. Hey, hey. <laughs> My buddy Joe, me and Joe have known each other since we were little kids, right? Yep. Seems like forever. And uh, he's just thinking about getting into bees, so it's really his first time kind of going through hives with any detail with me. Got his brand new bee jacket on there, you can yeah. see. And so we're gonna kind of maybe some of the questions that the kids have, um, may have he may have too. So it's gonna be a good opportunity for us. So let's head over to the, one of the hives. I think I got one picked out and we'll kind of try to answer some of the questions as we go along and uh, just see how the bees are doing on this beautiful October day. So here's the hive I've chosen. As you can see, we've got several hives here. I've got around a hundred or a few more than that at different places, but here at this spot, I've got a few, as you can see right here, and there are a few across the street. This hive right here is a, I think it's a really good hive. They look like they're pretty strong for this time of the year. See the bees going in and out. When you have bees, you want to have a smoker. See the smoker here. This is what we call a hive tool. There's different kinds of hive tools. That's used to kind of pry the hive apart and move the things around inside the hive. And then Joe here has a bee jacket on. It's brand new. Um, it's made out of ventilated material. They really just about can't sting through this stuff and it's cooler especially on those hot days. It doesn't have the gloves on yet. We'll probably end up putting some of those on. <laughs> As for me, I've just got a little veil on my head. I'm gonna try and go without putting the whole jacket on today. But if I have to put one on, I will. All right, so here we go. There's a school that is asking these questions. It's Marley Middle School. It's in Glen Burnie, Maryland. And the teachers of the science classes are Miss Sawinski, Miss Hammerbacker, Mr. Mincy, Mrs. Milburn, Mrs. Umberger, and Miss McDonald. So the first question on here, this list is from Rainier, and it says, can bees kill you? The answer to that question is yes, but it's very rare that that could ever happen. It almost never does. Some people have severe allergies to bees, and that can cause them to where they make them where they can't breathe, and it, it can kill them, but it's very, very rare. Almost everyone will swell a little bit when they get stung by bees. Um, some people swell pretty bad. Uh, but to actually get killed by bees is a very rare occurrence. Uh, second question, what got me started rescuing bees? Um, I got my first bees in 2013, right after my father passed away, right here at the farm. And I just was interested in them. There were a couple of events that happened in my life that kind of got me interested in them. But from the time I was a little kid, I was kind of interested in insects. I grew up here on a farm. I've always been intrigued by them. And I, I had a home health patient. I worked at a home health agency who have bees and he talked to me a lot about bees and he and it, I got really interested and I just kind of decided to do them. And so I got my first two hives in, in uh, April of 2013 and I just kind of went crazy with it after that. And then the third question here is by Jaron. Uh, why do some bees have stingers and some do not? And we may be able to show you in the hive a little bit about why that is. All the worker bees have a stinger all female. The queen also has a stinger which she almost never uses. Um, the only bees in the beehive and the honey beehive that don't have stingers are the male bees and uh, we'll talk to you a little bit about that later. So let's break into this hive and see what we got. So the reason we have smoke is to help calm the bees and the way it does that honey bees use mostly pheromones or smells to communicate. So when you put smoke in the hive I use pine straw for fuel. When you put the smoke in the hive, it kind of interferes with their communication abilities. That's why it calms them down, I guess. But I have not been in this hive in a while, so we'll see what we have. Let's put a little smoke in there. I really have no idea what we're gonna find. I need to know there are bees in there. That's about all I can tell you right now. bees on the lid. 
Now, this time of year, the bee population is actually going down, so you won't see a lot, as many bees as you normally would. Sometimes I have these hives stacked up, right? This box, set, this, this one has three boxes on it. Sometimes I have it six or seven boxes deep. Um, someone asked a question about kind of why do beehives die or colony collapse disorder. There are a couple of pests that are really bad and can take a beehive out. If you look right here real close, you see these little black beetles. There's some live ones in here too. Those are called hive beetles. Um, and so I put these sheets in here. They're almost like swiffer sheets or little cloth towels that I put in here. They're disposable and the, the beetles get caught in them. There's a few little bees too, but it's mostly beetles and it really helps control that population. Okay, someone asked the question, how is honey, how do bees make honey? This is what honey looks like when it's ready, when it's completely processed. Look right here. That is a frame of honey. What they do is, if you look around the edge right here, see how it's kind of shiny? Right there. That's nectar that's been brought in, it's not completely processed. What they do is they bring nectar in from flowers over here too. They bring nectar in from flowers and they uh, move it up into the hive and they process it. I'm not sure exactly how they do it. Over here's some nectar over here too. This right here is really not ready to be harvested. This would be ready to be harvested. But we're gonna leave this honey on them for the winter. Once they get it processed and it's ready to go, they get the water content of the honey down. They want it to be down about 17 or 18 percent, ideally, and then they put a wax capping on it. That's what this is. The wax capping protects the honey. It preserves it almost like putting a lid on a jar. So each of these little honeycomb cells right here, has, they filled up with honey. They process it. See those little bees right there? They're processing. They might be drinking some. I'm not sure what they're doing. And then the wax cappings, that honey right there is ready to go beautiful honey and uh, when we harvest it we have a process and you can look at some of my uh, other videos on Bruce's Bees if you want to see that how we did that we have a process where we slice through or cut off these cappings so it opens up the cells we put in a great big machine look at those two bees right there see them drinking that honey right there that I just uh, just uh, messed up a little bit a little tongue sticking out we call it I think that's called a hibiscus or something like that the proboscis tongue, yeah a proboscis yeah a little proboscis sticking out right there drinking that honey Pretty cool. Right. We're gonna break into this next next one here. Oh, that's heavy. Each of those boxes of honey weighs about probably about 35 or 40 pounds, give or take. Honey is actually sold by the pound and not by the fluid ounce. And so if you ever buy honey and it says 16 ounces, like in the store that I was talking about, like a pound of honey, like weight. Are bees scared of rain? No, they're not. However, just like you or me, they, they, if it's gonna rain, they get back in the hive and they stay out of the rain as much as they can, especially if a hard rain is coming. Uh, they all come back to the hive, they come home. The best time to get into bees is not when it's raining because they are not happy. Just like you don't want the roof taken off of your house when it's raining, they don't want it taken off of their house either. So Steve asked, how many bees does it take to make one tablespoon of honey? Each bee is responsible in their entire lifetime for making one twelfth of a teaspoon of honey. And so if there are three teaspoons in a tablespoon, that means it takes 36 bees on average to make a tablespoon of honey. Mariah asked, do they kill bees when they spray? Um, it depends. Uh, lots of farmers are really good to spray at certain times. Uh, the main issue with bees and spray is if the bees fly through the spray, otherwise they typically seem to do pretty well. Um, a lot of the crops around here, they'll spray herbicides and fungicides and things like that. It's really not really good for the bees, but they manage. I mean, there are fields close to these bees and they, they do fine. Um, there are some issues uh, with that, uh, but, but most, you know, most of the time the bees will do okay. Every once in a while, honeybees can get into some spray, into some poison, and it will kill them. But most of the time, my bees anyway, I haven't had a lot of issues with that. What is the difference between wasp and bees? A couple of differences just in looking at them is wasps are kind of shiny. The honeybees have a little bit of a hairy or a furry uh, body. Um, honeybees also have a barb in their stinger and they can only sting you once. When they sting you, the stinger pulls out and, and they end up dying. Um, wasp, hornets, a lot of other flying stinging insects can sting you multiple times because they don't lose their stinger. 
what is colony collapse disorder? Colony collapse disorder is uh, basically a problem they found they had a lot, and I think it still does exist some, where people would lose many hives, uh, like a big strong hive like this, it might have bees in it one day, and then you know you come out a few days from now and all the bees are gone. They just leave and disappear. I'm not sure what the cause of that is. I don't know if they really know for sure. Part of it could be from these parasites, like these little beetles. Uh, part of it could be uh, from mites. There's a, a, a little mite that gets in bees. It's called a varroa mite or a varroa destructor mite that gets in the honeybees. And it's almost like mosquitoes um, or other uh, parasites for people. They can pass viruses and things from the, to the bees and that causes them to get sick and sometimes they'll leave or they'll kill the bees out. But I don't know if they know for sure what actually causes colony collapse disorder. Um, I do lose some hives every year. It's just part of beekeeping. If you're gonna have bees, you're probably gonna lose a few beehives. So there's some honey right here. They'll be putting some honey around here. If we go into this hive in the springtime, you wanna see a lot of breed. But coming up to winter like this, they don't lay as much and the population goes down, they've got this food stored and they're gonna kind of lower their population down a little bit, get ready for winter, so they don't have as many mouths to feed. Some more honey. This might be mostly honey in this box too. These bees are very calm today. As you can see, I haven't had to put on my jacket and Joe hasn't had to put on his gloves. He's right there with him taking the video. So see how this hive tool is handy. It helps you pry the frames and this is pretty much all honey in here. I wish you could smell this honey. I don't know, Joe, if you can smell it at all. It's kind of a sweet smell. Mm -hmm. um, this is the fall honey coming in. So I don't see any really brood in this box. Brood is the baby bees being made, and that's usually where you might be able to find the queen. It is a beautiful day, and it's a lot much nicer to work with bees when it's pretty outside. These right here are some treatments I'm doing for mites that I put in here. Mm -hmm different ways you could do it. these little mm -hmm. strips i put them in here like at the end of august i think it was it's been about six to eight weeks it's time to take them out but they have a uh, something in the in them that that will kill mites but it will not affect the bees or hurt the bees in any way and so hopefully we've eliminated any mites that we might have in here by using those strips not a lot going on there oh right there i got stung okay see right here the bee stung me can you see it good and when I pull her off, the stinger will come out. The stinger came off right there. If you can see it or not. Yeah, I got it. Where'd it go? It's right here. I was zoomed out. There we go. And it's hard to see that little stinger. It's tiny, tiny. So that's one of the disadvantages to working bees without gloves. If you put your finger on one, they can sting you, which is what I must have done. <laughs> little yellow dots in here, that's pollen. They pack it in there and they're storing that for wintertime. Pollen is very important for the bees. It's their source of protein. Over here, you've got nectar, honey they're storing. Nectar is their source of energy or sugar and it becomes honey. That's their source of sugar. And the pollen is their source of protein. So they gotta have pollen. Look at that frame of pollen. Really kind of cool, all different colors of pollen. Sometimes you have greens and purples and yellows and oranges, all different colors. It's pretty cool. All right, we talked about male bees. There's one right there. This is a drone. See those big ones? They've got big eyes. They can't sting you. They don't have stingers. See that big eyes? That way they can see the queen to be able to catch up with her and mate with her. And we'll talk about that in a minute. No stinger, so I'm not worried about him stinging me. There's one that just came in. And these other ones, that's this female bee. That's a worker bee. See, she doesn't have near as big of a body or abdomen. And that one could sting me. Someone asked how queens are made. I think Miss, Miss Hammerbacker asked that one. They're made the exact same way as workers, except that they feed the queen, it's called royal jelly, from the time that the egg is hatched until they put a little cap on this, like a little cocoon that sticks down like a peanut shape. We probably won't see any queen cells this time of year because they aren't making queens right now. They do that more in the spring. If you look right here, this is what you want to see. It's called brood. In the springtime, you'll see frame after frame of this stuff. This is baby bees being made. It's like in each of those little little cells like this over here, um, there's a baby bee that's like in a cocoon that's gonna hatch soon. Over here, I don't know if you can see it, we call this, uh, I call it milk brood. The queen will lay an egg. If you see eggs, you know there's a queen in the hive. 
and then it turns, they feed them a little bit of like royal jelly type stuff the first few days, and they develop up into what they call larva, which is what this is over here. And then this area is larva. And then when they're about, you know, they, then they cap them with these little caps like this, and then they um, develop until they hatch out into little worker bees. See, the bees are very calm today. I'm touching them. They're putting pollen in those cells right there. They're just busy working, getting ready for winter time. Look at these bees eating this honey right here. This, these frames were kind of glued to the frames above with this wax. And the bees are just trying to, they clean everything up. They try and keep everything clean in the hive. Doesn't that smell good, Joey? Can you smell it? Yeah. It smells so good. Yep. That's one thing people, if you've never been in a beehive, you can't understand is how the beehive really just, it smells really good. It's kind of weird to say, but it's true. Is it there? No, that's the drone right there. I thought that was a queen, but it was a drone. The queen looks like the worker bees, but she's long and slender. And she's got a great big behind that she that is just full of eggs. So back to the, how the queen is formed. It takes her 16 days for a queen cell from the time it starts to form until she hatches, from the time she's an egg until she'll hatch. Once she hatches, after a couple days, she'll go on what they call mating flights. And she will mate with a several numbers of drones. She'll do that for several days. The more drones she mates with, the better. And when a drone uh, mates with a queen, he dies immediately. His only purpose in life is to mate with the queen. He doesn't make any honey. He doesn't do anything. He just kind of roams around the hives. And if, he, if the queen goes flying through where he's at, uh, drone congregation areas, if the queen flies through, then she'll mate with them. Um, Gosh, I hope we can see the queen. And then she'll mate for about the first, I think it's like 10 to 14 days after she's hatched, is when she'll get all that done. Then she'll come back to the hive and she, will, she won't leave again unless she swarms. Now there's only one queen in a hive, so you might wonder what happened to the old queen that was in there that laid the egg that made the new queen. Well, lots of times, especially in the spring, the old queen will take off with a bunch of bees and that's what they call a swarm. And they go hang on a tree somewhere or just anywhere until they can find a new place to live and then they'll go start a new hive and the new queen that hatches will, will take over the hive and so that's how bees split in the wild for that beautiful brood this is what you call a brood pattern you want to see almost like a sheet of this brood right here you don't want to see many holes if you got a lot of holes in it a lot of spot what you call spotty brood then that means the queen's getting old or maybe there's a problem with parasites or mites or the hide's not near as healthy then. There's one out there with the pollen on her leg. She's been out yeah. getting pollen. It's kind of cool. Yep. I don't know what that bright pollen, that bright yellow pollen, I don't know if it's goldenrod or, or what particular flower it is. There's a few things blooming right now. It's kind of pretty. The best, what they call honey flow or nectar flow is in the spring. So let me look at the questions here and see if there's anything else that I can answer. We'll probably close this one up and then we'll go look for a queen in another hive and when we find her, we'll show you what she looks like. I hope I'm getting all the questions answered. Have you ever gotten stung with, with your protective gear on? The answer is yes. Uh, with the jackets like Joe has on there, um, it's not very common. I usually start off like this. If they get after me, I'll put a jacket on and then, then if, they, if I need to, I'll even put gloves on. If they get me, it's usually through my gloves around my hand area. Um, but occasionally, very rarely will they get you through that jacket, but it does happen. Sometimes they'll get you in your legs, but they're usually flying around trying to get you up in this area up here. If they're really mad, if it's super hot outside, if they're not in a very good mood, then that's when they're more likely to get me. A couple more quick questions here. How do bees reproduce? We talked a little bit about that. Uh, the, once the queen, the queen will mate with those drones and then she will go to work. Uh, an actively laying queen can lay anywhere from 1,500 to 2,000 eggs a day. That's a lot of eggs being laid. She, and the bees, the other bees just tend to her. The worker bees, some bees are assigned just to take care of that queen. They feed her, they groom her, they take care of her because they want her to be healthy and laying eggs. The worker bees obviously are what do most of the work. And so they're all female. And in order for that queen to lay, to know what to lay in that cell, the kind of egg to lay, she measures it with her little, with her little uh, antennas and she'll measure those cells out and she'll know if she needs to lay a fertilized egg, which would be a worker egg, um, or if it's a bigger cell, the bees will make bigger cells for the drones and the drones are unfertilized eggs. And so 
That's the only difference between the drones and the, and the worker bees is that drones are unfertilized eggs and workers come from fertilized eggs. A queen egg is exactly like a worker's egg, except she just gets fed different things when she's in the larva stage after she hatches out of her egg. Why are bees endangered? I do think it has something to do with maybe the, the sprays we talked about before. There are some issues with that in certain parts of the country. Um, but really around this area, the bees are not in danger. There are a lot of bees out in the wild here in Alabama and in many parts of the country. Um, the bees are kind of making a comeback. Uh, big beekeepers, commercial beekeepers do lose some every year, but, and there are a lot of bees that die out in the wild, but there are a lot of wild bees out there. I'm not sure how in danger they are anymore. How do bees help humans? Almost like a large percentage of what you eat has to be pollinated. There are all kinds of pollinators out there, but most other species of insects or pollinators do not live in such big hives as the numbers that honeybees do. So they will haul honeybees across the country to pollinate things like almonds and blueberries and um, cucumbers and watermelons because they have to be pollinated by uh, honeybees or some kind of bee. And because there's such so many bees in a beehive, that's the most efficient way to do it. So. A lot of what you eat was probably pollinated by honeybees or some other type of pollinator. Food would be pretty boring without honeybees. You wouldn't have a lot of choices. Why should we care about bees? Um, well, one reason I think we should care about bees is because they are, they're just kind of God's creation and they're very important. From a selfish perspective, we should care about them because they do pollinate a lot of our food. But they're also just a miracle of nature and um, they're pretty awesome, as you can see. I think that's all the questions that you had. I hope I've recognized everyone. We got the question from Rainier, Steve, Mariah, and Miss Hammerbacker talked about how's the queen made. You want to be real careful when you do this for two reasons. Number one, you don't want to smash any bees if you can help it, especially the queen. Do them one frame at a time. Number two, you don't want to get the bees all mad at you and have them start attacking you, which they can do. They really are being quite calm today, which surprises me this time of the year. I guess there must just be some good uh, nectar coming in from the goldenrod and various fall flowers that are blooming right now. How do, I, how do I get so many beehives? Well, I talked earlier about the swarms that happen in the spring. Actually, Joe right here a couple years ago had a big swarm that came to his house and was hanging in a tree. and. Actually, I have a video about that on my YouTube channel from back a couple years ago. So when they leave the hive, they'll go hang somewhere. And they, of course, they scare people because people don't know what the, what's going on. And so they know I'm a beekeeper and I come and get them. Where people just, you know, they just want me to have, be able to get more bees. And so I'll put them in a hive and they'll grow into a beehive. And also, like in the springtime, I can take a couple of those frames of brood with some eggs on them. And I can set them over somewhere else and they'll make their own queen out of eggs, or I can put a mated queen. You can actually buy queens, I can put her in there. And over a couple, after a couple days, they'll accept that queen, and then they'll start producing and um, grow into a beehive. That's the most common way that I expand, is I do splits, they call that. Many different ways to do splits. So, and the other way is to do actually do removals, and somebody asked how do I rescue bees, I, you know, if I rescue bees. I don't do a lot of those removals or bee rescues when it's like in a house or in a wall somewhere. But there are people who do that. So you can get bees just out of people's homes or walls. But that takes a lot of work and it's a lot of skill. So that's pretty much what it's like on the inside of a beehive. Hope you've enjoyed it. Joe and I are going to go see if we can find a queen. So you see what a queen looks like. And I think that'll about wrap it up. So we're going to go into this little hive. This is a new hive I just made about a month ago or so, I think. I made a split and put a new queen in here. This is a bucket I used to feed them because they didn't have a lot of food in here when they started. There's still some food in here, I think. Not near as many bees in these little starter hives like this. This is what the new frames look like. The kind I use. They're plastic with a wax coating on them so the bees can build that comb out on there. And they haven't, there's just not enough bee power in here to do that yet. I see some eggs, so she must be in here. I bought these queens in the mail. They sent them to me from Texas. Can you believe that? They send bees in the mail, queen bees in the mail. 
This is the cage she was in. When they come, they have a cork in one end and they have, in this end too, you remove the cork on this and there's candy in there that keeps the, that they eat and they eat that candy out. And by the time they eat her out, eat the candy, the queen is released and free. And by then they've recognized her smell and she's the queen of that hive. So let's see if, oh yeah, look at this. All that brood, that means she's laying because it's been about a month since I've been in here. So let's see if we can find her. She's gonna have a blue dot on her supposedly. Okay, here she is right here. She's very busy. See these bees taking care of her right here? They're very attentive to her. She might drop her. You no, know, like she'll just walk along and she'll she'll lay eggs in all these cells here. She's got a kind of a light blue mark on her. That's the blue is the color for 2020. And see how she's these bees are so much smaller than she is. And some queens will get much bigger. As she gets older, she might get bigger. But she's really doing a good job. You see all this brood that she's laid here? So that's what a queen bee looks like. Sometimes they're really yellow. Sometimes they're almost black. These particular breed of bees is kind of in between. So there you go, now you've seen a queen bee. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's been kind of fun making it. I think Joe, I don't know if Joe's learned anything yet today. Yeah. I'd love it if you subscribe to the channel, check out some of my other videos if you're really interested in bees. There's some good information uh, there. I've seen me doing all kinds of crazy stuff with my bees. Sometimes they're a little more fired up than they are today. Hey guys, I'm glad you're interested in bees. I hope you enjoyed this and learned something from it. We'll go ahead and sign off for now. Uh, thanks for watching Bruce's Bees. On to the next video.